Well, our main concern is actually the U.S. Um, if you look at the U.S. markets, it's, it started to turn volatile. Um, earnings last quarter, even into the uh, fourth quarter of last year, has not been very good. Actually, year on year, it's turned into negative growth for both revenue and, and, and profitability. We don't think that the market has adjusted for it. I think uh, uh, multiple expansion itself, the question now is which one adjusts? Is it the P or is it the E? The E has gone down already, and I think it's time for the P to, to start adjusting. Having said that, I, I don't think we're in for a crash. It's just we need a deeper correction in order to clear out the excesses to, to make adjustment for all the lower revenues and such. So I think the uh, market is still poised for a down move. We expect maybe even up to a 10%, uh, 18,000 on the S&P 500. So there needs to be an element of re-rating here. But there's a sense, uh, Sonny, that first quarter earnings and the economic data was something of a soft patch. We could see a rebound in the second quarter. Do you share that view? Potentially, yes, but also I think at this, in, in the second quarter, moving into the second half of the year, we really have a lot of challenges. We're talking about Brexit, we're talking about the US presidential elections, uh, we're talking about a situation whereby, yes, the Chinese economy does look as though it's stabilising somewhat, but you've brought up the problem with debt and such. So it's still a challenging situation. Uh, visibility is very, very short. Um, in terms of we, looking just six months ahead, we, I think it's still not that, that very clear. And we were talking about this off camera earlier on. Mm. Asia, the sentiment it is still quite fragile, isn't it? And that's being reflected in the volume, in the turnover. We're not seeing any conviction in terms of the traded volumes, yes? Exactly. I think the, 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 we've seen some fund flows moving back in, but I think these are the people who have gone out excessively trying to build back a small position because they don't really want to get caught out. Uh, you know, typically fund managers, for example, if they're 8% into, into emerging markets, currently today they're almost 0 or 1%. Let's build back a little bit. So we're seeing that kind of flows moving back in, but not the real conviction type of flows. Let me take the opposite view. I mean, you flag Brexit and the US elections as risk events for the global markets, and I don't disagree with you, but isn't all of that just arguably short-term noise that's distracting us and shouldn't patient capital your clients for example mm -hmm. be focusing on the value where is the value yeah. so again uh, emerging markets we're over we're overweight uh, europe we're we're neutral and in the us we are we're underweight the problem with brexit and and the us president, presidential election um, it, it's that it's now 50-50 for either one of them. You go to any polls, no one's really sure about what's going to happen in, in the UK, no one's really sure, sure about what's going to happen in the US president, presidential election. And that is what worries us. Because it's okay if the market has a view. It's not okay if the market goes into these events 50-50. It's, it's very much like the Fed who, who will uh, communicate well ahead of a hike or, 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 or a, a cut uh, in order for, for the market to discount the event. Uh, today, I don't think the market has really discounted Brexit or even the US presidential election.